<laughs> so excited. Yeah. This is going to be interesting. That's the most important thing. It is. It is. <laughs> all right. Good morning. It's good to have you all here today. Uh, I have a couple of announcements before we begin. First of all, Bible study is taking a break for the month of June. So Wednesday mornings, um, I'm going to be out of town for two of them, and people are busy, so we're taking June off. We'll be back for July. So just so our, our normal Bible study crew is aware, do not plan to come on Wednesdays for, for the next month. Um, I also wanted to let you know Synod Assembly is happening this upcoming week, so Dan, Tim, and I will be hanging out. Angela, you're going for... I wanted to, but... Oh, I'll... just kidding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Synod Assembly is happening down at Teal, so that's where we'll be Thursday and Friday, so hanging out, learning about what's going on in the Synod, and I'm sure we will report back afterwards, so we'll get to hear all about that. Um, welcome to our guests today. We're so glad you're here with us to um, be a part of worship for Bring a Friend Sunday. We also um, have food afterwards, a lot of food, so stick around to help us eat the food. Um, we may have gotten a lot of bagels and things, so eat or take with you if need be. Um, you'll see in the bulletin, everything is in the bulletin except for the hymns which you'll find in the back of the red hymnals in front of you. So and I'll make sure to help announce that as possible. Also for communion, you are more than welcome to come up. We believe that this is God's table and you'll hear that in the prayer we say ahead of time and that God invites everyone to come and participate in that. So feel free to come up. If you are uncomfortable receiving communion, um, you can do the cross over your chest and I'll give you a blessing. We also have gluten-free wafers and grape juice if um, wine or regular wafers aren't an issue. So just let us know and we'll, we'll accommodate any needs as best we can. Um, it's Trinity Sunday, which is always a fun day. So we'll see how the preaching goes. It's gonna be fun, <laughs> hang in there maybe. Um, all right, and starting, not this Sunday, but the following week, I will be in Chicago. So I will leave on the 12th and be gone through that whole week. Um, so if you need anything, we'll have the pastor who is filling in for me, Jean Keebler, who's from Faith Lutheran. She, her information will be in the bulletin next week, so that way if any emergencies come up, that sort of thing, she's available to help out. All right. Is that all I have for announcements today? We've got birthdays. Are we going to sing, do you want me to sing for, no. He's like, please do not make me sing. So Doug's birthday is today. Yay. What, what, yesterday? Yesterday, sorry. Yesterday. It was, and Lily, my niece over there, she, her birthday is tomorrow, but we won't sing at her either. So, but happy birthday to everyone celebrating. And if there's other June birthdays, also happy birthday. We have an anniversary today, too. Yes. So John and my anniversary is today. We did the pretty flowers to take home to call me out like that. So, yay. <laughs> Yay for being married 12 years and still both being alive. Always good. <laughs> so, uh, any other announcements before we begin today? All right, if not, we'll begin with our prelude. <laughs>
playing. So Sunny's on vacation, Vicki is filling in for today. And I do want to take a minute to look at the last hymn because there is a leader part and a chorus part or a group response. So let's look at hymn number, let me look for it myself, um, 513. So um, you'll see in the beginning, we'll sing the chorus through twice, and there is a leader part where I sing the listen. And then all will join in, listen, God is calling, on and on. And then there's leader and all. So just take note of, I'll be singing the leader parts, and then you all will be responding. You see that, that part? All right. We, I think we've done this hymn before at the beach service. I know we've done it at Synod Assembly, but it might be new to the rest of you all. So we are going to figure it out, and I'm sure it will go great. So, yes, Karen is raising your hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. So cookies are you guys Thursday. So I would bring it in by Wednesday. Okay. So if you want to bring cookies or fruit uh, for Synod Assembly, I will take them down with me. So just make sure you get them to me prior to Thursday. So, all right. Now we'll begin with worship. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned, we, we have hurt our community, we have slaughtered your blessings, we have hoarded our bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to see, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Receive the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We'll now sing hymn number 413. <laughs>
it all so with you. God separated the light from the darkness. 
God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the water. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for the signs for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their work to And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had done. So God blessed the seventh day, and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in the creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thank you. We'll, we'll read Psalm 8 in response to you. O Lord our God, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouth of the infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek out? You have you made him but little the Lord of the angels. You have him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the 
works of your hands, you put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how exalted is your name in all the world. Our second reading today is from 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Probably not in this life, 
but hopefully in the next we'll get some answers. How does that sound? So, answer, I know. Wouldn't it be great if we had an answer now, right? I'm big on that too, but sometimes things just stay a mystery. But what our God does do through our readings, we'll see, is God invites us to be a part of the work that God is doing which is a pretty neat responsibility we get. God created us in the beginning to help watch over the world and take care of it, and God asked us to share good news with other people and to talk about God's love, which is a really important thing to do. And so we get to do all of that as part of the work of God, so we get to be a part of that, even if we don't know all the details of how everything works yet. So I think that's a pretty neat thing that we get to do. So we're going to pray. You ready? All right. Dear God, Dear God, thank you. Thank you. For working in this world. For working in this world. Even if, even if we don't always understand. We don't always understand. Exactly how you do it. Exactly how you do it. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, guys. Right, it's Trinity Sunday. We're so excited. <laughs> um, eight years ago, when I was interviewing to be your pastor, um, the call committee said, "How about one of these weeks of June, you go to Lamb of God and you preach your sermon for your um, neutral site sermon?" So the call committee will go to Lamb of God. We will watch you preach and help with worship. And I was like, that sounds great, because I really wanted a call, and I really liked the interviews so far with you all. And then, after I had agreed to that Sunday, I looked at the readings, and I was like, it is Trinity Sunday. <laughs> this is not the Sunday that you preach an interview sermon for, um, because it's a difficult Sunday for a lot of preachers. Um, I joke that we also refer to Trinity Sunday as Heresy Sunday, or... <laughs> Um, as Associate Pastor Sunday or Intern <laughs> Sunday. This is the Sunday that the main pastor takes the week off, which I clearly forgot about. <laughs> so, um, as I started thinking about how difficult it is to try to sum up the Trinity, um, what I realized is that a lot of this is difficult because we don't know how this works. I can't fully tell you how God works in these three persons. Theologians and religious authorities have argued for centuries about the persons of the Trinity and how they relate to one another. And so I will say that expecting pastors to break this down in a neat little package in about 10 to 12 minutes might be a little unrealistic. So there are many ways that I've heard on of the verge on heresy um, that you might have heard, which is there are three forms of the same thing like water, ice, and vapor. I thought about bringing stuff like that out for the kids. But then I'm like, but it's not fully that. Um, or they're the same thing, but different relationships. Like how I'm a mother, and a daughter, and a wife. So we've, we've maybe heard these things. And then there was the whole three-leaf clover idea that was an oldie but a goodie um, explaining things. But in the end, all of these examples, all of these comparisons, fall short of getting to the heart of the Trinity. And I think the challenge of this Sunday is learning to be content with the mysteries that often come with our faith. As one of my pastor's colleague, colleagues talked about uh, in text study this week, all throughout his childhood, the men of his family would gather around the open hood of a car at family gatherings and parties, and they would all just look and talk about all the different parts in theirs. And he didn't understand anything about it, because he was just there as one of the men to look in. And one day, an uncle leaned over and said to him, you know what, I don't really understand how all of this works either. I'm just glad that when I need it to, it runs. <laughs> and the pastor said, that's actually how I look at the Trinity, is I don't really understand how all these parts work together, but I'm just grateful that it does and that it works. 
Despite all of the mystery, I think there are things, though, that we can learn from these persons of the Trinity. We know that the defining part of them is relationship and unity of mission. The goal for all is the good news of God's love to be known in all the world. God, the creator and father, made the world with love, created and began all things out of love in hopes of relationship and unity. Christ the Son came to love our world and weld with us, showing us the purest example of, of love by laying down his life on the cross. And the Holy Spirit is busy at work, guiding and inspiring, encouraging, and sending us out to share this love in all places, bringing us together into community and into relationship. This Trinity is all about reaching out and proclaiming love. And we as a church are called to model our ministry and callings after this God. And so we get to be invited, as I told the kids, into God's mission of caring for the world and for each other, of being drawn into community, and to get all things in order to bring about peace which maybe that being included in the letter to the Corinthians was a hint that that's easier said than done. Um, we're given the opportunity to lighten the burdens of others who are carrying too much. We get to discern and know how to help and what to speak, and to act for justice for those who have been overlooked or discriminated against. We're called to cry out with those who have faced devastating losses, and we're called to discern the time and place to act when things are ready and how to go about doing it. And I think we do this best when we are in community. The thing that is amazing and beyond my comprehension is that these persons of the Trinity can be so different and yet at the same time so united. And the church needs to take that to heart as well. We can challenge each other, we can grow together, we can learn together, even as we embrace all of our differences. We do not need to be the exact same cookie-cutter copies of one another, but instead are called to embrace what God has given us and to use our gifts in ways that better the whole of the church. We don't need to think exactly the same, live the same, believe exactly the same, to be unified in our callings as followers of Christ. What we do need to do is learn how to be a beautiful community where we can get to the heart of the issues facing this world, showing up with God's good news in times of need. So how can we support each other and act as Christ's body to those who need help and kindness? How can we celebrate with each other when God's love is most tangible? How can we speak the words of promise to one another as God does to us? And how can we go out and share that good news with those who may never have come through these churches' doors? Now this doesn't mean, as I always say, that we fully understand or know that what's going on. There are things that we're going to get hung up on sometimes. That's a normal part of faith life. In our gospel reading for today, I actually do not like the translation because a better one would be though about those who are present when they saw him they worshiped him and doubted not like there was a group over here that didn't understand and everyone else was completely fine and understood they both worshiped and doubted and isn't that how we often come to God with reverence and with a heck of a lot of questions with awe and sometimes with confusion, with a calling, and with uncertainty. We can have both of those things together. But you know what? Jesus speaks to all of them, giving all of them this great commission. We don't have to understand everything to go out and make a difference. We just have to be willing to serve and to show up to do what we're called to do. We're invited into this community and mission, even with our questions and discomfort with mystery, trusting in God's grace to support us.
And we're able to do all this because of the promise that we don't do this alone. Our God is with us and has always been. And just as God formed the earth in the beginning, breathing life into all things, we also know that God goes with us until the very end of the age. That's the promise, that we never go alone. We never delve into this mystery by ourselves. And we never share this news on our own. We are called to go out trusting in our faith and leaning on each other to share this good news of love with all the world. And for that, I give thanks to God. Amen. We'll now stand and sing our hymn of the day, hymn number 450.
hard hit. Good job hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, now confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come out to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we're going to install Dan as our uh, Eucharistic minister. So you guys can take a seat for a minute. Um, Dan, so Dan has volunteered to join the Eucharistic ministers, which means he'll go and visit our homebound member or uh, people who are uh, at home most of the time. And he'll bring them communion. So we're grateful that you're willing to do that. So, Dan May has been appointed by the Congregation Council as a Eucharistic minister. We give thanks for his willingness to serve. And in baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that Dan will take the body and blood of Christ to our homebound and hospitalized members. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And a reading from Matthew. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the ground. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowd. Let us pray. God of grace, you gather us into one and nourish us with word and sacrament. Bless all those who serve as Eucharistic ministers, especially Dan, that our Lord's Supper may be served with joy and reverence, and that all with whom they share the, his body and blood may know your loving, healing, and forgiving presence. We give you thanks for all who respond to the call to serve in your name. Give them joy and fulfillment, care and guidance in their ministries. Help us all to give willingly and to receive thankfully the gifts of ministry. That your name be glorified, your people live in peace, and your will be done. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So now, group participation time. People of God, will you support Dan, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, please answer, we will and we ask God to help us. We will and we ask God to help us. So I now declare that you're installed as a Eucharistic minister of this congregation. Almighty God, bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be a faithful servant of Christ. Amen. And now you all can stand up. you got a break. Um, this is back to the prayers of the people time. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel and direct all the baptized into lives of humble service. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse 
and sustain living creatures of every kind, wild animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern truthfully. Heal divisions between nations, that we might agree with one another and live in peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those in most need of your healing presence, any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick, especially Bob, Doreen, Leona, Sue, Karen, Marge, Mary Jane, Mark, Peggy, Ed, Evie, Betty, Diane, Marty, Pat, <coughs> Brad, Rita, Sandy, Carmen, Nancy, Vicki, Stacy, Kimberly, Brian, Alma, Carol, Cheryl, Sue, Fran, Phil, Andy, Jeff, Timothy, Edna, and Mark. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis, and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. We give thanks for all the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of resurrection life in the age to come. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with you. Please share that peace with one another as you feel comfortable. Peace. Peace be with you guys. Thanks for being here. Peace be with you. 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 Peace
giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation, and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adorned in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Um. Our Lord became incarnate. 
This is the table, not of the church, but of Jesus Christ. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a while or ever before, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come not because the church invites you. It is Christ who invites you to be known and fed. Amen. 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 Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. Amen. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world, through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we'll do our sending of the Eucharistic minister. Gracious God, you took the form of a servant, offering yourself as food, comfort, and strength to a sick and hurting world. Anoint with a servant heart those who take your word and sacrament to our sisters and brothers in their homes and hospitals. Especially today, we pray for Dan. Grant grace, mercy, healing, and hope to those who feast on your body and blood and receive your words of new life. May we all recognize that we have a place and a home in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We're going to make our way down so I can sing with you all and be liked. So before I do the benediction. All right. The God who calls us across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. 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 We'll now sing hymn number 513. Remember, there is leader parts and all parts, so we'll try our try it out.
Thanks for trying.